the one drug that we haven't spoken about is ustekinumab, uh, and that blocks both IL-12 and IL-23. It's kind of an older version that predated the uh, uh, IL-23s. They block a, a, a chemical called P19. Uh, ustekinumab blocks a, uh, a protein called P40, um, uh, which, which contributes to both IL-12 and IL-23. It seems that IL-23 is the pathway we want to block, not the IL-12 pathway. Um, ustekinumab has been around for more than 10 years. It is dramatically effective, but not as effective as some of the IL-17 and IL-23 blockers. Um, but the advantage of its having been there for 10 years is we know that there are no increase in, in malignancies or opportunistic infections, so we don't expect to see those with the new IL-17 and IL-23 blockers either. Um, and in fact, people born with deficiencies in P40, which is what ustekinumab block, get only two infections. They get salmonella infections, which to the best of my knowledge have never been seen in patients with, treated with either ustekinumab or any of the other drugs that we've talked about. Uh, and the other infection they get are mycobacterial infections. Uh, and uh, the way those patients often uh, were identified is in a lot of the world they use BCG vaccinations to protect against tuberculosis. BCG is a live mycobacterium, and the vaccinations in those patients made the patients ill. Uh, and that's how we know that, that they are deficient in P40. Um, as a result, uh, when we treat patients with any of these drugs, we do uh, TB testing, usually annually. Uh, and if they're positive, we simply treat them with uh, prophylaxis so that the uh, mycobacterium does not, e the latent mycobacterial infection does not evolve into active TB. Um, uh, and that appears to be effective. Um, certainly uh, in patients who uh, have undergone clinical trials who were TB, uh, PPD positive or quantiferon positive, uh, we have not seen any patients progress to develop tuberculosis. We have so many choices of treatments for psoriasis now that we have to weigh in other factors to help us determine which drug we use for which patient. Um, so I will say, uh, and I won't say this proudly, but probably the biggest impact is what the insurer will allow us to prescribe. Uh, now certainly we're not going to prescribe a medication that we think is bad for a patient. So for example, if a patient has had a history of a malignancy, a lymphoma, or a lot of skin cancers, uh, I probably wouldn't go for a TNF blocker because they carry that black box warning. And certainly there's evidence showing that they could contribute to the development of squamous cell carcinomas and potentially even uh, lymphomas. So in that setting, I would not use a TNF blocker. Uh, and if the insurance company insisted on it, I would simply fight them. Uh, uh, and it is not a difficult fight. Uh, there, if you simply write a letter, and the American Academy of Dermatology has those letters already written for dermatologists to access, and it takes about 30 seconds to generate a letter, uh, which my secretary does for me, uh, we can get pretty much the treatment we want, uh, and, and largely based it on the patient's comorbidities. Um, so in a patient with malignancy, we wouldn't go for the TNF blockers. We might go for an IL-12 or IS, uh, I, I'm sorry, IL-17 or IL-23 blocker. Um, if a patient is obese, I would tend to go for some of the stronger medications we have. Um, so some of the medications we have are given according to the body weight. Infliximab is one of them. Ustekinumab is another. And certainly, even though the IL-17 and IL-23 blockers are given in fixed doses, they're so effective that we use, often use them in obese patients. Uh, if a patient has risk factors for cardiovascular disease, right now the TNF blockers have the most evidence that they are protective against cardiovascular disease, and that evidence comes largely from registries. But as we uh, have experience with the IL-17 and IL-23 blockers, it looks like probably that's go they're going to be protective as well. If a patient has psoriatic arthritis, then they're going to likely get either a TNF blocker or an IL-17 blocker because those are the most effective drugs for psoriatic arthritis. So there are many factors that we, uh, that we put into the equation 
when we decide which drug we're going to prescribe for a particular patient.